Hello, this is Jeremy Wade. I've just been talking to Kara. Uh, we've probably gone on way over our allotted time. I'm sure she'll manage to scrunch it down to something that uh, is interesting for you to listen to. Uh, that's the really famous podcast. Okay, great. But I'm not going to scrunch it down into something. <laughs> the whole thing was interesting. Right. Just saying. <laughs> Hi, this is Kara. You're watching Really Famous, where I have real conversations with actors and TV stars. Today I'm talking to Jeremy Wade from River Monsters and Mighty Rivers and now Mysteries of the Deep. He and I get really personal in this conversation, so you want to stick around till the end. Here we go. So I just I did a DIY hair. I just did a D, uh, my second DIY haircut uh, yesterday. So. You, you did bad. that yourself, really? It looks very good. Yeah, it's not too bad, is it? Yeah. No. Um, in the mirror and with some clippers and then you're having to you know trying to work out which is back which is forwards which is left which is right is all a bit it's all a bit it looks hard, great i think you did a nice it, job but uh, other than you not many people are seeing me you know i'm just sort of staying in the house and walking around a bit yeah. right so hmm. where are you i forget you told me last time you live in a small town right in the uk That's it. yes yeah so i'm in uh, southern southern uk um I think I think a lot of people in the U.S. have heard of Bath, uh, so I'm I'm about half an hour south of that, sort of fairly fairly rural area, small town. Okay. Yeah. How are you holding up? Uh, keeping more or less sane, you know, so, so, sort of in the circumstances, doing all right so far. I'm very lucky here. Again, you know, it's it, it's rural. I've got a garden. I can sit out in the sun. I can go for a walk. Uh, you know, so it's, it's, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. do you remember our talk last time? That's the big question. I do. Yes. Um, I, uh, I remember the, I remember where it, I remember the sort of the layout of where it was. I can't remember how we got there or where it was exactly. Yeah. 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 So that was interesting. Yeah. So I saw your new show last night. I saw the screener for the first episode oh, of Mysteries right, okay. of the Deep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So congrats on that. Another new show. It seems like you get to have a new show. Like, every couple of years or something. Exactly, I keep thinking this is it. Uh, we've sort of hit the, hit the bumpers. There's, there's maybe, maybe we, we've exhausted the subject matter, but then this came up and uh, yeah, it's a case of how about taking things from just mystery creatures to, let's just open it right up uh, to all the other stuff that might be down there under the water, both the oceans and fresh water. And the, yeah, it turns out, well, there's, there is quite a lot. What can you say about that that's new? I think that was, uh, you know, that was partly what we're trying to do. It's not just, you know, here's another one of these stories that people talk about, but is there anything that we can say about it that's, that adds something, you know, you know, anything new in the last few years? Yeah, I think it seems very different to me. And like, there is plenty to talk about. Like, even in that mm. first episode, you had probably like four or five different mysteries that you looked into. Yeah, that's it. I mean, I, I think uh, each episode has has four or five different stories. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they, they, you know, they, they, they zip along. Some of them you sort of think, oh, you know, there's more here. This could maybe be a whole program. But right. uh yeah, I think en enough to en enough to whet people's appetites and hopefully leave them sort of satisfied, but still, it's interesting, isn't it? Because I think a, a lot of people don't like necessarily to have a mystery completely solved. I think we always need that little bit of mystery left, don't we? It's a bit like it's a bit like seeing how a magic trick is done, and sometimes when you see that, it's a bit disappointing. And it's like, oh, is that what it is? It's this mechanical thing. And, and okay, okay, it's very clever. It's very technical. But I sort of wish I didn't know that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. Well, there was one on last night's show that you left unanswered, kind of. It was mm. like you went through the whole thing. Which one was it? I feel like it was the towards the end of the show. Oh, it was about the ship that just kind of floated oh, away yes, 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 yes. from Nova Scotia. I mean, am I giving that? I guess I'm sort of, it's a spoiler that I'm giving right now. No, but. I think, well, it's a, you know, this is, a, this is a problem I've been having. I've, I've been asked to talk about the show and it's like, well, I don't want to obviously give too much away. Um, but yeah, I think that was the, the one about the, 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 the ghost ship, wasn't it? The, uh, the, the Russian cruise liner that was decommissioned. It was being towed away yeah. to, to, be, to be scrapped and the, the, the cable broke and it drifted off and it just dropped off the map. Um, and, and because the fact that it wasn't operational meant that it wasn't transmitting anything 
and it's just floating around the oceans and and some satellites thought they picked something up that matched its its footprint the coast guard in ireland raced there and it wasn't there and uh, and this is just one of a whole fleet of ghost ships which is something i never knew existed and so i think uh i think maybe uh, yes if i was if i was a ship's captain or on a cruise ship i might be you know i might um, I think somebody described them. One of the scientists said they're they're, they're like metal icebergs just floating around. Yeah, you know? yeah, so, that's what they <laughs> said, right? It's so interesting to think that that could be happening out there, like just somewhere in the middle of nowhere. But yeah. it's interesting that you just said that you didn't know about that because yeah. that's what I was thinking about last night. Like it seems like there are so many facts that you present in all your shows, like you know, but then this, but then that, and mm. it's like it seems like you know everything about what's going on out there in the world. But I guess as you're researching it, no, you're learning as you go too, right? Well, exactly. I mean, in a sense, I mean, the, the, the programs that I'm used to doing are investigations, and and this was also an investigation. It's it's so it's uh, here's something that, we, that we've stumbled on, and. You know, we had access to a lot of very interesting um, archive, not just stuff of uh, film of, of new f phenomena, but, but sort of very uh, valuable archive relating to ancient mysteries. So we've, we've got the visual element of it for TV. But then what we did, we sort of put that together with, uh, we assembled this very diverse panel of experts so engineers marine archaeologists mathematicians psychologists uh, tree uh, ring specialists tr tree ring specialists uh what else um uh fluid dynamics you know you name it i, I mean so and and some of these people when they sort of put their input into into some of these stories it's like hang on a minute here here's a new insight this actually if it doesn't solve it completely, it, it, you know, it becomes oh, a little, you know, it's, it's, it's tantalizingly a little bit closer. Yeah, it's very cool. Mm. I think it's a great show. So mm. how many episodes are there? Did, how That's, many did that, you do? Uh, 10 episodes. So I guess you did it all before the whole coronavirus pandemic situation, right? Yeah, we uh, yeah we were lucky. We just we were just sort of uh, uh, well. In fact, we've had to the actual uh, the post production some of that has happened um, after after the lockdown. So the production company did an amazing job because, um, you know, the, I work with a production company in Bristol in the southwest of, of England, and they, um, you know, they've got an office, uh, they do a certain amount of editing in-house, and then over the space of a couple of days, um, almost everybody, apart from a very small skeleton staff, went to work at home. We had editors doing stuff at home. So a lot of that stuff, you know, a lot of the finishing touches um, was actually done from home. I was even doing some of the, a little bit of the audio. Sorry, oh. can you hear this? It's, it's, my email's pinging there. Um, I, I, was, I was even doing um, some stuff. So, so they were able to, instead of having it in the limbo, they were able to put the finishing touches together and get it out, which is which is amazing. I mean, uh, that I is. Not, I, yeah, I'm not a technical person, but I mean, they, they pull out all the stops for that. It is amazing. I was actually thinking mm -hmm. last night, I had a feeling you did it all ahead of time, but it looked like it could have been the kind of thing that you could even put a show together like that, I think, if you had to, with, even during a lockdown. I mean, because all the interviews too, with all the experts that you talk to, they mm -hmm. could have each done their own interview too. Of course, the lighting and everything else wouldn't have been mm -hmm. perfect, but yes. I guess you could have done that. And it looked like you were just standing in one spot the whole time, right? That's it. That's it. That's it. Where so, was that? So, uh, that was, we found this amazing place uh, in, in the southwest of England, a bit of coastline in the county of, of Devon. And uh, I, was, I was looking at the geology there. You've got those amazing rock strata. And I went and I looked it up. Apparently, it's this is where a couple of uh tectonic plates a couple of land masses just crashed together way back in in prehistory and so all the strata have completely crumpled they're all going in different directions it makes this incredibly sort of all these jagged rocks the waves come crashing in there and all you've got to do is just point the camera in a slightly different direction you've got a whole new backdrop That's and cool. so we were doing that um I don't have great memories of that because we were doing that, uh, things got a bit delayed and, and instead of doing it in lovely summer weather, we were doing it in the middle of winter. And well, it, uh, and so I am, if, if my mouth looks slightly sort of in a bit of a rixus, you know, I, I was, I, you it know, doesn't. I, I was in the process of freezing here, you know, now and again, but I mean, it was, it, yeah, it was an amazing setting. And it, again, it really speaks to, I mean, what, 
just a great background for for just talking about the power and the mystery of the ocean i think yeah very cool mm. so for the other episodes are you in that same spot or do you travel because normally i'm used to seeing you travel you're all over the world and i know that you've spent your whole life basically traveling mm. so are you doing it for this show or is it a little different no, it's a little bit different this one. So, so uh, I was I was doing those you know those links uh, from the same place. Yeah. So basically, the traveling was really uh, we travel by means of 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 archive film and and and, and other you know other other clips that that we do and 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 bringing in the experts. So it's more of a it's a bit more of a I suppose a mental journey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So do you miss the actual physical travel? Uh, yes, I do. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I was, I was, uh, I was supposed to be, I was supposed to be off in March, but you know, we saw in advance of things, you know, the, we saw the way things were going and thought mm, this isn't going to happen. And so, so were you home at that point? I was home, but, uh, but, uh, I, I, I've, I, I, I was packed. I had a, I had a, I had my, my, you know, my packing list was halfway, halfway done. It's, it, you know, it's quite sad. It's sitting there. I've got a, I've got a bag which I'm, you know, I'm now I'm now raiding for underwear and stuff, you know, which was, you know, which was it was sitting there, um, and it's it's sort of it's yes, it's this, this sort of semi plundered bag that that I've uh, with a list, this very sad list with the date of March 2020 on the top oh. of it, you know, sitting there. Yes. But, uh, it, it will happen eventually, but um, yeah, I'm just being philosophical about it now. Yeah, I mean, so so that was for work, though, right? That was a work. That was it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Where were you headed? Uh, I was going to go to Brazil, so mm. uh, you know, not a would not be a good place at all to go now. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows how long it'll be uh, before it's uh, advisable to to go back there? Mm. Um. So I guess uh, time will tell on that. Yeah. So absolutely. how are you doing emotionally now that you're home a lot? Well, as you know, I, I I am quite lucky in my situation. I, I, you know, a lot of people are really struggling. Um, yeah. People who people who live in cities and they can't go anywhere. I mean, they, they must be. I can you know, I can just imagine how how it must be stuck in an apartment or something like that. And if you go out, lots of lots of people. Are out. I'm 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 very lucky. I, I live in a, a small town, rural community. Um, I've got a garden. I can sit out in the sun. I can go for a walk. Um, they recently just in the last few days they've said it's okay to go fishing as long as you uh, physically distance yourself so i've i've been a couple of times down the local river um but i think yeah what's interesting it it, it is it's very different you know it, it 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 is something that uh although we sort of people you know people are sort of accepting it but it just it it it, it just it came out of the blue and I think it's it's something that really does make you think, or it should make you think. If it doesn't make you think, then you know you're not really paying attention. What are you thinking? God, oh, all sorts of stuff. Um, well, I, I mean, I, 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 because I am uh, what, what I do is 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 an international thing. I, I travel around a lot, so. Um, I am not looking just at what is happening here. I'm looking at the international situation. And when you and when you see how different countries have responded differently, that is, you know, that is a real eye opener. The idea, you know, our government is saying to us, oh, you know, it took everybody by surprise. You know, this is, you know, we're just doing the best we can. You go, if if you look at what some other places have done, I'm sorry, that just doesn't hold up. You were asleep. You know, you were not paying attention. You are not fit for purpose. And, and we're stuck with them for for several more years now. Um, and what can we do about it? I mean, yes, they are slowly waking up, slowly trying to get a grip. But they gave it such a head start that we have, you know, we have so much further to go now in terms of of, of uh, getting to any kind of normality. So. Uh, you know, and, and an yeah. individual caught up in this situation. God, you know, it's you've just got to. It is a bit like being flying in an aircraft. Someone else is flying it. You, you know, you are just as it well. You are entirely um, dependent, in, in in a sense, on 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 what the pilot is doing. And if the pilot happens to be unqualified or on, you know, a kid on work experience or something, then my God, you know, there's not a lot you can do about it. 
Right. That's a good analogy. <laughs> but like, and you fly all the time. And if you think about that, when you're in the air, like you don't even want to think about that, but it's true every time you fly, like literally it's the same thing as what's going on now. Well, exactly. I think exactly. If, if you're flying, then, you know, whoever is flying this, this, this machine is, is qualified. They've been through a tr whole training process. You know, there are engineers who keep this thing airworthy and all the rest of it. It turns out that a country you know, you can get to run a country just based on making up, uh, making up a slogan that a few people like, you know, and then when something like this comes along, just don't know what to do. It's, you know, it is quite um, sobering. Yeah, <laughs> sure. So are you thinking about, like, do you feel like you're going to change anything about the way you do things later? Like when the lockdown sort of, I don't know what you would even say over, but you know, has it well, kind of cha changed perspective for you in terms of what you make changes that you want to make in your life? Yeah, well, I mean, from, I mean, from the work point of view, I think it's it, it's not going to be like a switch. It's not going to it's not going to just get back to normal. Uh, yeah. it, 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 it'll be it'll be a process. And so um, it's yeah, it, it's 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 a case of responding to things as they uh, as they unfold. And I, I don't know. I mean, personally, like I was just saying just now, I, th I think a certain amount of acceptance is is necessary. You know, it, we can't just mourn the old days and oh, this is terrible. You know, uh, this we are where we are. There has to be a certain amount of acceptance. But again, I think uh, we also possibly have a duty to speak out and and and, and be critical um, where that's necessary. In terms of me, I mean, I don't know. I, um, I, I want to be working again. I mean, it's interesting you said earlier on that, that a show like uh, Mysteries of the Deep, that is the kind of thing that you could, you, you could do under lockdown. Yeah. And I think having done it once, it's all, you know, the first time is always hardest. And uh, yes, I think it would be possible to do that kind of show. That would, you know, that would a, a lot of the people, you know, a lot of the people I work with have, uh, a lot of them are on furlough now, a lot of them on reduced hours, you know, so that would bring people, uh, back to work to a certain extent um but i i miss the actual going out and uh yeah. out and about meeting people and uh yeah you, you know it, it's yeah. it, it's uh you know i i i, I get cabin fever and I, and I think i just have to sort of well uh there are you know, it's, it's looking for the silver lining. So, so it's, uh, yes, I get to sit in my garden. I get to, I've been filming the fish in my pond. I've got very secretive fish in my pond. They, ne they never come up to the surface. So I sort of, I've been sticking a GoPro in there and trying to film them and uh, catching up on reading, you know, things that I, that I don't get time to do otherwise. So it's, it's, it's trying, to, trying to stay productive and, and trying to not just go into suspended animation, but, um, and it's been, you know, here, it's been nearly two months sort of lockdown. It's, it's you know, wanting to, to, to see something that, uh, that you've achieved, I guess. Yeah. Um, mm. So, okay, so where are, so you're, you're telling me about where you are. You're in the rural town, you're getting outside. Are you with anybody? Are you alone? Your family with you or what? No, I'm on my own. So I'm, uh, yeah, it's just me in the house. So, so what I, is that like? it's a bit weird. Um, one of my brothers lives about five minutes away and uh, I have been isolating from him. So we've, we, you know, we've been doing, uh, like sort of video calls on, on the phone and it's, it's, it's really weird because it's like, he's, he's only around the corner, but it's like talking to your relatives in Australia or something. It's like, what's the weather like over there? Oh, well, it's, it's, it's obviously it's, it's the same as here because you're yes. only, um, but no, as of a few days ago, um, it, it's now, you know, the rules have slightly changed. So I can actually, I, I can actually go and stand at the end of his garden and one of the family can come to within two meters of me and we can have a face to face. So that's a bit strange having just seen him in a. In so the, did you do that yet? Or are you going to do yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, you yes, did yes, it? Well, and how was it? Oh uh, yeah, that was interesting. Uh, although the, the, their dog, which I used to take for a walk has sort of forgotten who was very merry of me would, would, would sort of, uh, would come close and then slink away. It took me quite a while to sort of remind the dog who I was and to wow. get, get to, to reaccept me. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> 
We, I did something similar. We've done it a few times because we can, we're allowed to do that. So where we've seen like my parents, we've gone to visit them, but you know, we're isolating. We don't want to get too close to them. We don't want to risk them getting sick. So like, we'll go to their backyard and they'll stand on their deck and, mm. you know, we'll talk to them. We did it for mother's day, but it's just not the same as like sitting around the dinner table mm. and telling stories and making jokes or whatever. Mm. It's so weird. It is. It is very odd, isn't it? And and it um, and it's it's interesting what you sort of accept as normal. I mean, when when we when we started, you know, the whole the whole thing before we had, we actually had sort of lockdown here. Before um, when we were sort of advised just to give people a, a wide berth. If you're walking along the sidewalk and someone's coming towards you, and you would step to one side, the you know there was this feeling that they they're, they're going to you're offending somebody by, by, right. by doing that. And it took a while. It took, you know, I'm thinking it took a week or two before actually everybody is okay with that, you know, cause you do that and you give a little smile and hopefully it's like, you know, it's nothing personal. Yes. It's just, we're, you know, we are doing this because we're, you know, we're trying to stop this thing spreading. And not uh, just that, um, but it's almost the opposite actually. So if you mm, don't, if somebody yeah, yeah. doesn't do that, then yeah. it's like, wait, Hey, what are you doing? Like we need to space ourselves out from each other. So if mm. somebody takes up the road or whatever and doesn't go to the side, it's like, Hey, it's the opposite of what you would think before. I, ex exactly. Uh, you become very aware of your, of this sort of space around you. And actually that's interesting because that's something I have noticed when traveling, you know, when you go to, uh, if you go to very crowded parts of the world, uh, I'm thinking, I'm thinking the sort of the, 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 the northern, the, you know, the plains of India, the, the sort of, you know, the area uh, around, around Delhi there, for example, you know, where you very dense population and, and you're suddenly just aware that, that, uh, you know, what I regard as my space is just being encroached all the time. And, and you, you then, you know, you, you make an adjustment to that. Um, and what we've got now is a sort of, a, yeah, there is this sort of psychological space that you're recalibrating around yourself. Yeah, it yeah. is so, it is so strange, you know, even when you see people and you, like you're saying, you kind of give them that nod, they give you that nod and you like acknowledge or whatever. Mm. It's still like you wouldn't break out into a conversation or something like maybe you used to do, or you would have done a few months ago. Yeah, it's, um, I, I go out walking quite a lot and, and I will, I will try and say hello to most people. And it's, it's interesting. Yeah. I think most, most people you get, you get, you get a, you get a bit, you possibly get a bit more contact, which is quite ironic, you know, because, because you're, because you're giving somebody a wide berth, you you say a little bit of a hello as a, to compensate and you might get a hello back and you might get a little bit of a conversation. Whereas before you might've just gone, you know, head down mm -hmm. past each other. So it's, uh, yeah, That's you know, I think, you know, psychologists probably having having a field day in all sorts of uh, respects. Right. Of this. Yeah. So I don't know if you remember from last time, but I like to get like I like to sort of get into like uh, almost like a therapist point of view of what's what oh, and, and okay. how you've evolved over the years and whatever. So we talked a lot last time about like how you got to where you are, which is so interesting. Like so, you were you were a teacher for a while, I remember, and it was yep. such an interesting history. So. Uh, would you say so just getting along those psychological lines so are you mm. an extrovert do you think or are you kind of an introvert next up jeremy gets personal jeremy answers that question and gets a lot more personal in part two he talks about how he's evolved over the years he talks about family his parents personal loss and other things you probably want to hear so make sure you're subscribed to really famous Tap on that subscribe button and then click on the bell so you're notified when the next video drops. Thanks for watching. I'm Kara and I'll see you next time. If you like this video with Jeremy, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to Really Famous for more videos with your favorite celebrities. Thanks for watching. I'm Kara and I'll see you next time.